Welcome to How to Become an REO Superstar. My name is Robert Weichelt, and I'll be your instructor today. I've been in the real estate business for over 36 years. During the last REO turn, I was approved with over 44 banks and REO companies. I scored in the 1% with Freddie Mac, 1% being great, 10% means you're fired. I had a branch in six states, REO and short sale. I closed over 3,500 REO transactions last REO market, and I'm a proud member of the EXP family. I'm a broker associate. I coach, train, and mentor agents all over the country regarding the REO market. So let's ask a question. Are REOs still viable? Is it time to get positioned? Six steps to REO success and how to position yourself. Those are the topics we're gonna to talk about today. Now, first things first, is REO coming? The opportunities still exist. I see it all the time. I saw a property from Fannie Mae today. Uh, HUD foreclosures are going to be starting. Uh, we're starting to do a lot of HUD training. So I certainly think the time to position yourself is now. One thing I want to be very clear on is I don't want anybody losing their home. But it's a fact that I have no control over that market. And when it does come, the banks and the servicers will need stellar Superstar REO service from top REO agents that know that market. REO services are still recruiting agents and they're starting to basically reach out to agents now. So assignments still exist. REO inventory is certainly on its way. The question is, is it gonna come in a tsunami or a constant set of waves? The jury's still out on that one. But let's talk about the six steps to REO success. First thing you need is your REO resume. You need to register with the banks and start accepting BPOs. The REO and BPO portals like Equator and ResNet and the others, make sure your profile is up to date. Make sure your information is correct and current and the banks know how to get a hold of you. The next thing you need to do is complete a Rockstar BPO. I feel that using BPOs to get listings is the best way to leverage those BPOs. Do a great job and become an asset for those asset managers. We're going to talk about opening the new ass uh, assignment, Cradle to Grave. We're going to talk about cash for keys, and we're going to talk about property preservation, <clears throat> accounting, offer desk, and the transaction coordinator. Now, what are some of the agent challenges? The out-of-area institutional seller, changing bank procedures. Every single bank has their own way of doing things. Getting the business, that's a really hard one for most agents. They don't know where to even find these banks. And once you do get the listings, you have the financial wherewithal to handle the many expenses that come up with bank foreclosure properties. Standing out and getting noticed to get the listings, that's a hard thing. They're not gonna, the banks aren't gonna drive by and see a bus bench or a, or a, a, a you know, name writer on the freeway or anything else. They're not gonna get your postcard. They really are looking for agents that know this distressed property market and always knowing what the score on. The banks score you on everything. So let's talk about those special set of skill sets. You need to know how to evaluate a property. That's really inherent in every single agent. <clears throat> you need to learn how to evaluate. What about vacating the property? Cash for keys. Managing those properties and all the many moving parts from cash for keys to interior, exterior maintenance of the property to health and safety issues that come up with the property. And also getting that property listed and properly sold for the highest and best price for the bank marketing that property, and of course, the ultimate sale of that transaction. Let's go talk about some REO farming sites. We've got foreclosure.com, propertyradar.com, Realty Track, Lane Guide, and of course, your title company. Those are great resources to start and start cultivating and farming in the REO market. ResNet, great place to go. I'd recommend you go there and fill out a free uh, update your profile, equator.com, another great one. You can go there and do it for free. REO Network, go to REO Network. It's a great place for asset managers to go and actually find you. REO Connection and Superstar REO are both great sites to go to. Now, let's talk about resources and associations. We've got Taza REO. That basically is allowing the agent to manage the many moving parts and the tasks that are uh, inherent in every single uh, REO listing. REO Insider is a great place to go. And here's some places to go for, for latest news and updates in the uh, default space. You've got dsnews.com, that's five star. They both have conferences uh, that are well attended by asset managers, agents, legal folks. 
And Rio Mac is now called NADP, National Association of Default Professionals. Wonderful place to go. They have a yearly summit where agents go to get educated on the default space. Let's talk about your resume. Your resume is a marketing tool. Experience must be blended, meaning get with somebody that knows the REO business and really dive into that. Really get your resume, you know, all the real estate you've ever done in your entire life and talk about your your experiences in, and how the, you can help the banks uh, sell their REO listings. Why should they give you the listings? You got to ask yourself this question. Why would they give you a listing? How do you stand out from the rest? Think about that. Let's talk about the resume essentials. Your gross sales volume from day one also includes your days on market. What kind of REO experience, training, and certifications do you have? Do you have an REO marketing plan? REO services offered like rekey, trash out, initial clean, initial yard, repairs, board ups, evictions, monthly updates. There's lots of moving parts in the REO transaction. Of course, the number one thing, what zip codes do you service? What zip codes are you the market expert? Now let's talk about the resume in more detail. This is a generic resume and it's a you know, real estate broker. You got the broker name up there. You've got CRS, GRI, it reads a lot like alphabet soup. You've got the phone number, the email, the website, your experience, but there's nothing that says anything about default services or REO experience. Sure, you have your affiliations and recognitions and your designations, but it doesn't tell the REO asset manager that you have REO experience. Let me give you an example of one that does. This right here talks about sales volume, talks about how many units you've closed. It talks about BPO accuracy, talks about days on markets. It talks about REO services and related experiences. You've got marketing, pre-approved financing buyer network, letting those asset managers know that you have a buyer network, offering 203, 203 say that 15 times, FHA 203K rehab loans. Do are you know, do you know those types of loans and how they work? Do you have, you know, what are you gonna do to market the property? Let's talk about your network of licensed and bonded contractors offering full asset preservation services like rekey, trash out, repairs, board ups, et cetera. Talking about what you can do as an asset to those banks. Do you know how the process works? Can you handle inventory? Do you have the, the systems like QuickBooks and REO managers and transaction coordinators? Do you have a trained back office and field team? So these things are inherent in every REO property, do you understand and do you know how to work the REO business? Here's a big one, liability protection. Do you know the city and county ordinances, you know, the municipal codes, you know, for vacant properties, vacant and or abandoned properties? You need to know those things and the banks need to know you know as well. Now let's talk about your REO identity. In my opinion, I think that American Realty is great, but if you have American REO Realty, that would probably be better. Do you have an REO domain that's specific to this, this REO space? Do you have an REO account? So when new assets come to you and you're communicating back and forth with the asset managers that you can communicate with them. So make sure that your REO email signature has that you're an REO listing specialist. Make sure they know that you know what's going on. Let's talk about who the ideal REO agent is. Five plus years of real estate experience, three plus years of REO experience. Now, can REO experience mean that you've represented a buyer? Sure. You have REO experience. Now, this is pulled out from some of the banks when they're, you know, you're filling out the application to become an REO agent with these banks. You're pulling, you know, you want to pool your resources and you want to pool your experience. Are you trained? Are you certified as an REO agent? Can you speak REO? Do you understand the many moving parts and tasks that are inherent in every transaction? Do you have the financial wherewithal to handle the, you know, the rekeying, the trash out, the clean, the yard? the utilities in your name? And can you implement and follow systems? REO is a production line. Can you follow those systems? Now, let's talk about getting the business. You have mortgage lenders and servicers, sure. Credit unions, government entities like HUD. Asset management companies, there's lots of different asset management companies. I was approved with over 44 in the last REO market. And I'm actually, I have updated all my, uh, my profiles with these banks, and so I'm ready to go for them to be a service. What about your local bank? Talk to your bank manager and talk to them about any REO properties that they may need help with selling. Now, let's talk about the broker price opinion because this is important. 
This is how you get your foot in the door. BPOs are assigned to notice of defaults. Those are folks that have notice of default filed for not making a payment. You've got short sales, you've got PMI removal, you've got REO listing assignments, of course, and you've got a second opinion backup. So there's lots of ways to get an, uh, a BPO assigned to you, but you need to get your name out there and let them know you do a great job for them. There, there are many appraisals and a little bit more robust than a CMA that an agency used to doing. You can earn between 50 and $75 per BPO. That's an exterior is a $50, kind of a drive-by. And the $75 is more of an interior, full interior inspection. So it's more detailed. So you get a little bit more money on that. But make your BPO shine. That's the number one point I want to drive home. Make your BPO shine. And really, it's kind of your signature, your calling card. You know, REO asset managers are going to look at your BPO and see how well you did in terms of the value. Did Were you detailed in your comments? really make sure you do a great BPO. Let's talk about the assignment. First thing you do is you go in there and do initial site inspection. You determine the occupancy. Does somebody live in the home? Is it a tenant? Is it a previous owner? Is it vacant? What's going on? Is there somebody squatting in the property? You know, any kind of thing like that. Is there health and safety issues, broken windows, gates? Is there a pool? You want to kind of determine what's going on there and you need to report back to the bank within 24 hours. If it's occupied, notify your asset manager and or eviction coordinator right away. If it is occupied and the bank is offering relocation assistance, better known as cash for keys, then make sure you uh, are offering that as well. And then once you know what's going on, you would begin your exterior BPO. Now, let's talk about the untrained REO agent real quick. I, I just get a kick out of this guy riding his motorcycle and he's, you know, you know, not, not, that's not good. That can't be good. You know, things like, what do you mean I have to evict them? You know, if somebody's in the home, you have to evict them. Well, the eviction coordinator does it. You're just the first point of contact. I mean, here's one thing that I just can never understand. How in the world are they putting cement in the toilets? It just blows my mind. I've seen homes where they've taken the baseboards. They've tried to cut out the jacuzzi tub. And I get it. There's frustration going on. And, you know, they figure if I can't have it, no one can. But our job as agents is to protect the asset for the bank so it preserves the value of that property. Uh, things like another questions that they ask is the utility bills, I have to put them in my name, you know, stg &E, the water, the power, you know, all that. They, a lot of times that'll be put into the, the REO agent's name only to be reimbursed by the bank. So let's talk about a trained agent. And the reason why I like to show this is it's a great story. It makes me giggle anyway. In uh, 2002, my son was a five at the time and he wanted a motorcycle. And I said, well, son, I can't let you ride alone. So I've never been on a motorcycle before and I had no idea what I was gonna do. And I was, would most definitely kill myself if I did not learn how to ride this thing properly. So I reached out to a buddy of mine who used to race supercross. And I said, hey, can you train me how to ride a motorcycle? I wanna you know, enjoy this with my son. And I ended up riding in Qualcomm Stadium at the time in, uh, in actually in a supercross type race. So it was fantastic. So I went from not knowing what I'm doing to six months later, riding in, you know, Qualcomm stadium on an actual dirt track. It was, it was amazing, but it takes practice. You need to be trained at this process. Now here's something you need to do is you need to think outside the bus. Let me explain this. I had this listing in spring Valley. It was so steep. It's on dictionary Hill. The driveway was so steep that I literally could, I, I didn't feel comfortable parking my car on the driveway. So I parked it down the street and I walked up this hill and I was winded and I considered myself in pretty good shape at the time. So I walked up to the hill, up to the top of this home and I see this bus on the top of this property. And I'm like, how in the world, I can barely walk up, wasn't safe parking my car there. How did they get this bus up there? Well, guess what? It doesn't really matter, but the bus is here. The property was vacant. The sellers typically when they leave in the mid of the night, they leave everything behind that they don't want. And here's this bus. So instead of calling my asset manager with, we have a problem, there's a bus. I call them with, we have a problem, here's the, we have a bus, but here's the solution. So what I did is I reached out to my asset manager and said, we've got a solution for you. I've got my contractor, said he could cut this thing up with the Sawzall, put it on a, uh, on a flatbed trailer and haul it out of there. This is halfway through the process um, and the contractor standing there and his, with his hands in his pocket and blue shirt there. And 
we had to come up with a solution. We had to think outside the bus. So you're going to have things that come up that you really need to put your thinking cap on for. Now, let's talk about evictions. Now, typically what happens is the asset manager will send you a letter from the eviction coordinator that you will just hand deliver to the occupant. So you need to know what's going on. There's lots of bills that were passed last time around, and this time around will be no different, where we need to understand. We have to have some compassion and let people know, hey, listen, you know, we're just, we're representing the bank. We need to, you know, kind of, you know, be the messenger of, of this process and the home's been foreclosed on. If they have any questions, they can reach out to us, you know, for relocation assistance or whatever the, the bank is offering at the time. Now, I want to talk about income opportunities for agents. Now, you can certainly make some money doing BPOs, broker price opinions. You know, you average about $75, or excuse me, $65 a BPO, and it's a great way to get your name out to the banks, but it's also a good way to really learn your market and make sure you're doing BPOs that shine, that are doing, you're doing really good BPOs because the banks look at that and they say, this guy or gal does a great job with a BPO. We're going to send them some REO listings. Uh, let's talk about the REO listings. The average commission could you know, range from anywhere from whatever it is. Uh, but the big thing is it's, it's about a 30 day closing time, but here's the one thing that matters the most. Every listing needs to close. You're not going to get a seller that comes up to you and says, you know, uh, maybe I don't want to sell right now. It's not the right time. These homes need to get off the books. So they will sell. Every one of these will sell. You can double in some listings. 60% of my REOs were double ended because, I mean, all the buyers are coming come to me saying, hey, if you represent me, would you do that? So because we have a 21-day exclusivity window. So that's a, it's a great way to, to really grow your business and grow your team. You become the market expert more than anything else. You become the market expert because those REO leads to traditional listings. The REO leads to short sale listings. When that market's coming in, you got REO and short sale. You know, the REO asset managers are really a great source as well because they all talk. They all say, listen, hey, Robert does a great job. Let's give him some REO business. Who do you like in San Diego? I like Robert. So I've got agents across the country. I have an agent in just about every city across America. Now, let's talk about the opportunity gap. So many agents say, well, I don't even know where to start, but they do recognize the opportunity. Now, again, I like to mention that I don't want anyone to lose their home, but it is, you know, they need an agent that knows what they're doing, that can represent them their best interest. So there is an opportunity, but you need to understand the challenges. But how do you bridge the gap? Education and resources. Education and resources, guys, you need to position yourself for the REO business. You need to position yourself through education and resources. So you need to reach out to me and let's do some training. Let's do some education. Let's do some certification. And let's really find out how we can help you navigate the REO business. Again, are you positioned to get REO listings? I know you can do it. Reach out to me. You can continue the conversation with me if you want to you know, email me at robert at robertwhitekelp.com or simply text me, text Robert to 76626. That again, if you just do a new text, type in the number 76626 and in the message, type in Robert and hit send. This is Robert Whitekell with eXp. I hope you've uh, learned a little bit today. We just touched base on a little bit, but more importantly, my message is this. Are you positioned for the next wave of, that's coming to our way? Okay, this is Robert Whitekill, EXP. Have a great day.